Welcome to Charts Today Europe. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Tuesday the 23rd of October comes to you from London. We start by looking at markets. We're seeing here a sea of red, uh, Asia um, closing uh, lower and we're seeing also the US close yesterday fairly mixed. So we start by looking at the dollar. The dollar actually looking strong again this morning and that's of course then leading to uh, a weaker euro. Uh, so euro is weak dollar is strong we're seeing the dollar actually falling away quite heavily against the japanese yen this morning um that's just uh, a a flight to the uh, safe haven of the yen but uh, still the dollar is bullish in all three time frames sterling sank low yesterday below the 130 level uh and brexit worries still persist so it was now into uh pushing towards these targets 126 128 so Sterling is still bearish on all three charts with the lagging line below. Remembering this is my weekly long term, my daily uh, medium term and my 60 minute short term, my 1%, half percent and 0.1% on the 60 minute point figure. So this just gives me a, a long term, a medium term and a short term view. Uh, and at the moment, uh, Sterling is is pretty bearish on all three time frames. Uh, if we make new lows below this 126 level on sterling, then that would activate a downside target to uh, one uh, to parity, and we do actually still have this target in train of 105. So sterling could um, collapse, and and a lot of that is obviously going to depend on uh, the reaction to Brexit. Uh, against the euro, sterling is weak, uh, bearish on the long and short term chart. And against the Swiss franc, we're seeing here the fall away yesterday. And against the Aussie dollar, also just bearish on that short-term chart. Bitcoin, um, really little changed uh, and has been in the doldrums now for about a week. Uh, and indeed, really range-bound for a good few months. Uh, but still bearish, mostly. The S&P 500 index gave up most of its gains yesterday. It started quite well, but... Uh, um, we saw um, bearishness set in during the day and uh, we're now 0.4% um, closed lower and interestingly the seesaw on the lagging line is a worry. If we move below the low that we set um, last week or the week before that is going to be quite a concern for the market. <coughs> Looking at the Nasdaq Nasdaq actually was up yesterday, but still looking pretty bearish in the charts. The Dow was down half a percent as well. And the Russell 2000, the broader based index, um, is starting to compromise that low. So that is a really big worry. Um, the S&P um, 500 index, uh, the future is down this morning by over 1%. The Nasdaq E-mini down by 1.4%. Suggests we are going to see quite big falls in the market at the open on the US. FTSE future down over 1% this morning, cash market just opening now, and the DAX down 1.3%. So um, we are getting set to see quite big falls there. And these markets now looking pretty bearish on the long and medium term charts in Europe. So we are just seeing that across the board. Mid caps yesterday also making new lows. And um, the uh, Cat Courant also uh, scraping along the bottom, um, so that's quite key. In Japan, we saw the market close down over 2.5%, uh, Hang Seng um, down nearly 3%, and the Shanghai Composite down 2.25%, giving up more than half of yesterday's 4% gain. Uh, so uh, it, despite the government in China saying they would support Chinese uh, stocks, we're seeing um, th that uh, sell-off still occurring. Uh, the Sensex down a third of a cent, so relatively strong for the region, and the Aussie market down 1%. Uh, Brent crude uh, down half a percent this morning, so that sentiment weighing there as well. We're seeing downside targets to 75 and 78, uh, 1.6 and 5% uh, downside. <coughs> Looking at um, uh, Texas Light, we're seeing here um, uh, t downside of... Um, two targets and a new one just emerging this morning but 65 is the area that we're looking to there is sitting below $70 at the moment. US Nat Gas sitting at $3.13 um, taking a look at gold sitting at 12.31 so we're kicking up this morning quite significantly um, and that is having um, a bullish impact and gold really 
um, looking to edge through the cloud here. So we are just jumping higher there, about to activate another upside target. So um, the gold price benefiting from this um, global uncertainty. St uh, silver also um, just kicking up this morning. US 10 year yields um, <clears throat> sitting steady at about 3.15% this morning, but uh, looking a little bit more bearish. And the um, German bond um, price is actually rising, yields falling slightly and bonds rising. Taking a look at um, the market, we see here this sea of red. Uh, that the, This uh, screen, all my data coming from Thomson Reuters Icon. If you're running um, Metastock uh, into Updata, it will be exactly the same data. So um, that's an alternative for private users. Uh, this screen is running all on Yahoo data from Yahoo Finance. So um, here we're just pulling the data from Yahoo and we see uh, we've got um, uh, the, the US market showing through their bearishness there and we can actually see um, some of the European markets so the DAX uh, and the um, Euro stocks down yesterday these Asian markets are all looking more and more worrying as we just watch them kicking in in real time so uh, if we look at uh, the Chinese market for example we see here the underperformance versus the Dow Jones this is a Dow Jones relative starting at the year at 100 we're actually uh, sitting um, some 24% lower underperforming the Dow and making four-year highs lows, of course. So that's really significant with big downside targets to play for. Taking a look at the NASDAQ yesterday and just the tech stocks that were driving some of these changes, we saw Google was up 0.4%. We saw Amazon was up 1.43%. So finding support here on that medium term chart and Apple um, up uh, 0.61 and Facebook teetering at these 154 levels. We've got downside targets for Facebook, some 30% lower. This is all slightly academic, of course, because the futures are pricing in falls of 1.5% today at the open. So we'll see quite a lot of selling across the board on the NASDAQ. So we need to just be aware of that. Netflix lower and um, <clears throat> also I think stocks like Intel was up 2.3%. A lot of these gains that we saw yesterday will probably be unwound slightly, so uh, well worth watching um, today's open. Microsoft holding on to its gain, but very flat performance against the Dow over the last uh, few months. Looking at the FTSE this morning, uh, we haven't quite uh, got the prices coming in yet. We will in the next few minutes. Uh, but yesterday we saw we had NMC Health um, up 5.6%. Royal Mail recovering some of its big loss here in the market. So that's um, also a slight concern. Uh, EasyJet um, was up 3.3%. Ryanair's results helping there. Um, so we did have quite a few rises yesterday. Looking at the fallers in the FTSE, uh, we saw um, we had uh, lows really from Paddy Power um, uh, as was one of the factors there. So um, we had Paddy Power at the lower. Um, stocks like rent -to kill down some 2.7%. Really big moves here. Whitbread ahead of this morning's results were down 1.5%. They've come out with quite good results this morning. Uh, and just some of the majors here, Glaxo, Stores, m and uh, we saw that as well. In the 250 yesterday, we saw, uh, again, some quite big rises. Amigo up 7.5%. Uh, a vest up five percent, um, so there were um, gainers in the, in the FTSE 250, but uh, a lot of these stocks just putting in counter trend moves, having had big moves down. This is uh, EDF Man or Man Group. Looking the other way, um, at, we had a lot of the energy stocks falling yesterday. Uh, Can Energy down six percent, Premier Oil down six uh, percent as well. Um, and we just saw really um, some big moves down. Bookmakers suffered yesterday. We saw Paddy Power was down, William Hill sinking lower, and we're seeing really just that trend ac across the board. So um, really uh, quite significant moves there. Looking at the Euro stocks, uh, the, the, again, an MC Health, Royal Mail, Osram was quite a good performer yesterday, but on the other side of the coin, if we look to the uh, negative end of the market, we saw here that Philips was lower uh, yesterday as well. We're just starting to see some um, prices come in. This is the Euro stocks 600 group. So we're seeing now um, 
the the euro stocks uh, kicking in. Saab down quite uh, heavily this morning. Interestingly, uh, we're seeing that big move down some tw uh, uh, thirteen percent lower. So we are seeing um, a lot of negative news coming out in the market um, as we speak. Looking back to the FTSE 100 just at the opening, um, taking a look uh, this morning, we will see uh, st the stocks uh, coming in in real time in a minute. And uh, we, we just do have um, uh, quite big falls there kicking in, so it's going to be quite key just watching uh, which stocks uh, are performing there. Just looking again back to Europe this morning, we're seeing here um, <coughs> that uh, n other big falls here. A uh, lot of stocks in Scandinavia is falling away. This one in Finland um, down 7%. Uh, we really are seeing some um, quite big uh, moves there, so uh, it will be quite key. So here are the updates now are coming through and so we can now see um, this morning we've only got a handful of stocks actually rising this morning, uh, quite significant there. But if we look at the fallers, um, we do see some quite big uh, moves there. Uh, we've got uh, Whitbread lower um, as well, GVC um, and HSBC, lots of falls across the board, lots of stocks down over 1%. So no clear trend as to which stocks are the fallers yet, but we are seeing that um, happening across the board. That's it for today. Keep an eye out for that US Open. We'll put a market report out. Until then, happy charting.